start to begin to see a few cracks in the red wall, as we start to see, as I mix metaphors, rats jumping off the, maybe sinking, at least ship that is taking on water. The argument today is that people who care about democracy need to call for more than impeachment. The toppling this president is not the objective, ultimately. And it is definitely not sufficient to cure what ails us. We have to call for more than impeachment. And as we call for more than impeachment, let's do that with deeper values, a broader view, a longer view, and the whole darn country in mind. And what could those deeper values, those broader arguments, those base notes amidst the cacophonous trouble, what could they be? The argument here is that democracy is, in fact, the base note. We are joined right now by callers. We're going to be joined by Greg Pallast in a moment. He's on. He is. Greg Pallast, can you hear me? I can hear you. Hey, Greg, how you doing? <laughs> let's let's make it loud because the, the nation has to hear us. So Greg Pallas, the author of The Best Democracy Money Can Buy, has been making the case the drumbeat for democracy in the small and large way for years. I'm arguing that's the deeper theme. That's the base note. And also, you have been making the case that the stolen elections in your mind, and I agree with you, not merely and maybe even primarily by hacking computers, but by hacking voting rules and hacking voting districts. How do we think right now? How can that how can democracy be the deeper theme and what ought to be the first few things that people are calling for now? Well, number one, I know that a lot of folks are calling for paper ballots, but it doesn't help you uh, to have paper ballots if you're not allowed to vote. We have Chris Kobach of Kansas, uh, Mr. KKK, who is, uh, you know, running programs from cross check to alien voter purges that are costing hundreds of thousands of voters their votes in dozens of states, and I don't mean all together, I mean hundreds of thousands of votes in uh, 519,000 votes were, uh, voters were purged from the voter rolls of Florida by uh, one of uh, Kobach's protégés, Brian Kemp, the Secretary of State. By the way, and I'm sure it's just a coincidence, Brian Kemp is removing these voters as he is running for governor of Georgia. And... Um, as he's running for governor of Georgia against, by the way, Stacey Abrams, the first who would be the first black woman elected if it's not stolen from her. He's the Republican. Uh, in Ohio, we have uh, half a million voters removed from the voter rolls. That went all the way the, to the Supreme Court, and uh, we lost that. So voters aren't even getting to the polls. It doesn't matter whether their papers are ballot or, uh, or paper or feathers. Um, the mass purge of voters of color, and it's black voters, it's uh, Hispanic voters and the new target of uh, this uh, suppression campaign, Asian American voters, because they now vote 75 percent Democratic. And, and it used to be a closer split. So, so let us assume, for the sake of our argument, that everybody listening already agrees that there is, in fact, and this is not an overstatement, a war on democracy, with the exception that it, oh, you only define war as something that is fought with guns, that there is an assault on democracy. It is an absolute assault. Uh, there's, there's no question because it's, it's done. I mean, you almost can hear the echoes of uh, Goebbels and Totalenkrieg that it's total war on voters. This, you know, I, I uh, it, it's stunning to me. I, you know, I work uh, for those who know me. I've worked for BBC and the Guardian newspapers uh, from England, and they just cannot believe that we're having apartheid elections. In fact, I just spoke to an official from South Africa. He said, we ended apartheid. How about Georgia? How about Ohio? Uh, this is very serious stuff. And actually, uh, you know, I bless the Hartman program. Bless you guys for putting the word out because, you know, it's just blockaded in the U.S. media because we, we are so, you know, you cannot touch the myth that we are the world's greatest democracy. No, we were uh, one of the world's first democracies, but we seem to be willing to throw it away. I'm very concerned, especially about what the, the news I got out of Georgia this week. So, and I want to get to Georgia. Well, actually, let's get, get to there now. So explain, we talked about it yesterday, but remind people what was happening in Georgia. Well, I'll give you a little extra, too. Um, 
it, what's happening in Georgia, and by the way, I just uh, got off the phone with Helen Butler of the Georgia Coalition for People's Agenda, um, Reverend Lowry's organization, and NSAM Fotus uh, with um, Stacey Abrams' organization. Um, Randolph County, which is majority black, was about to uh, have two thirds of its polling stations closed based on the uh, uh, recommendation of a consultant named Michael Malone. Now, that's going to be beaten back. That's not going to happen because uh, black folk control that county council. However, here's the danger. And here's what's generally not being reported. Michael Malone is a consultant that was picked by Brian Kemp, the Secretary of State. Again, he's running for governor. I mean, come on. If, if Putin picked the people counting the votes, we'd be you know, dancing all around saying, ah, that's not democracy. He's an autocrat. Here, Brian Kemp is counting the votes, determining who votes and where they vote. If they vote, they're going to knock out two-thirds of the polling stations in black areas. Here's the other danger. Brian Kemp had told Malone and other consultants to consolidate, that's a fancy word for saying close, polling stations wherever he could around the state. Now, we've got the information from Randolph County, and it sounds like a big victory because that's being stopped. The problem is all the other 60-some counties of Georgia, where many are white controlled and they're consolidating, in other words, closing polling stations in black areas. Um, and that's the big danger. That's not being watched. That's not being covered by the press. And, and I want to, in an important footnote, very important. This could not have happened before the 2013 um, gutting of the Voting Rights Act because Georgia was yeah. under federal control. Uh, the federal government had to approve any closing of any polling station of Georgia to certify that it had no racial effect. Now you got to kind of find it. So they found it in Randolph, but that's just one county. That's just one county, and it's a county where they could correct it. I think we're going to see massive closings of polling stations all over Georgia. And, if, and when you remove half a million voters, hey, that's a good excuse to start closing polling stations. We just don't have as many voters as we used to have. Hmm. So two questions before you got to wrap. One, and you can pick one of them if you want. One is, any good news out there that you're watching? And two... What do you think the move is? So let's say, and, and sort of the highest priority thing to do now, is it mostly just to uh, sound the alarm and hope that that becomes more of the consistent beat that more people, un more people understand? Or do you think there are policy moves that can be done in local jurisdictions, in states that care about democracy to do something about it? All of the above. We've got to do a lot at, at, with policy, with protest, with legislation and with don't and don't steal your own vote. Check if you're in Georgia or in Ohio or any uh, Republican controlled state, go to your secretary of state's website, make sure you're still registered. If you're missing, I don't care if you voted 20 times the same place, re-register online, not on those pieces of paper. In Georgia, 40,000 people registered on pieces of paper and those papers just vanished. It was young voters of color. And the good news, I'll end on a good news note, uh, those neo-Nazis that beat up the school teacher in Charlottesville, identified by our pho photographer Z.D. Roberts, uh, two of them got 10 years and six years in prison for beating up that teacher in Charlottesville. There is some justice. Greg Pallast, author of The Best Democracy Money Can Buy. Thanks for being with us. You're the best. This is the Tom Hartman Show. I'm Jefferson Smith. Save democracy. <laughs>